The National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated stations present The Pacific Story. This is the story of the Pacific, the drama of the millions of people who live around this greatest sea where the United States is now committed to a long-term policy of keeping the peace. This is a documentary account of the situation in the Pacific, of the men and events which are today influencing world affairs for generations to come. Guam, new outpost in the Pacific. in the shade of the cathedral overlooking the plaza de España and Agaña and talk about the thing that was closest to us. Do you think America will ever make us citizens, Father? The Americans have been here 40 years now. We do not even have a delegate in the American Congress as Hawaii does. And as Alaska and Puerto Rico do. Are we never to have any voice in our own government? That is hard to say, Pablo. It is hard to say. As Pablo and the priest talked, I looked out over the green of the plaza with its border of coconut palms. I looked at the buildings around the square, the government house, the barracks, the courthouse, and Dawn Hall, which used to be a public school. It had looked like this ever since I could remember. The Spaniards were here for 300 years, and they did nothing for our people. Except intermix with our blood, as all the others have done. Intermix. One of my grandfathers was a Chinese. One of my grandmothers a Mexican. And my great-grandfather a Spaniard. I looked at Pablo and the priest. They, like me, were mixtures of the many peoples who had come to Guam and mixed with our Chamorro blood. There are nearly 25,000 of us now. We should have the same basic liberties guaranteed to other Americans. The people of America are a mixture of many nationalities. That is right, Pablo. But we are not regarded as Americans. We should be regarded as Americans, Father. And we should have the same liberties as other Americans. What do you say, Jose? I say we should be regarded as citizens. We are not interested in independence as the Filipinos are. But we should be citizens of the United States. Yes. Yes, we should. Yes. Yes, we should. This is the way we talk whenever we met citizenship. It grew more precious to us because it was so far out of our grasp. The Americans who came to Guam were friendly with us, with all the Chamorros, and we were friendly with them. And through their eyes, we saw that we were really not far different from them. Gee, this is just like back in the States. Picture houses, cafes, banks, post office. Of course, Agania here has only 11,000 people. I know, but still... It is the largest city on Guam, and it is a pleasant city. <laughs> Did you see the governor's palace built by the Spaniards? A palace? A real palace? <laughs> yes, it was built by the Spaniards long before you Americans came here. Yeah, I did hear something about the Spaniards being here before us. In those days before the war, we used to wonder what would happen to Agania, to all of Guam, if war came to the Pacific. You can be sure that any enemy the U.S. has in the Pacific will come here. Guam is the largest landmass between Hawaii and the Philippines. Guam is 36 miles across and has 225 square miles. We might get some help from the Philippines... But we're 3,600 miles west of Hawaii, and this is too far for help. The war came just as we always thought it would. It came on the morning of the same day that Pearl Harbor was killed. Run for shelter! Everyone run for shelter! When the planes were gone, 
They got fired in a dozen places. They have bombed the air base at people, the naval yards, the military installations, and the marine barracks. Are they destroyed, Father? No. Their aim was bad. But the oil tanks at Tume were destroyed by the fire that followed. Oh. They did not hit the Ganya. Why was that, Father? I think they have plans for a Ganya. Everyone knew that the Japanese would come back. The whole island was alive with preparations, but we had no planes, no strong fortifications, and we had few defenders. We waited. At 2 a.m., 40 hours after the first air attack, they came ashore. They came ashore at the Ganya and several other places, and we waited for them along with the Americans with rifles. They drove us back to the plaza. There we are! Coming to there! They drove us from the plaza. The last thing I saw as I left was the priest lying there on the green grass, dead. That same morning, five hours after the first attack, the Japanese flag was raised over the plaza. But we fought for three days more in the hills before we were taken and brought back to Agania. Effective at once. Everyone will bow each time he passes a Japanese. The United States is defeated. Hereafter, Guam will be considered Japanese. You will therefore destroy all American flags. Japanese flags will be given to you all. You will keep them and protect them. And whenever you are called out for a parade, you will bring your flag and carry it so that all may see it. Pablo and I were put into a labor battalion. All Chamorro males between 14 and 60 were forced to work. From time to time, we were called out to parade with our flags. Those who refused were taken away. None of us knew what became of our own people. Those who escaped were brought back, told us of their torture, how the others died. We suffered for lack of food. And when we objected... <laughs> now, I learned... all, I, all I did was to say that... You cannot learn the rules. This way, we will use other methods. But they could not destroy our allegiance to the United States. And we made up songs to the familiar tunes. Oh, Mr. Sam, Sam, my dear, oh, Mr. Sam, won't you please come back to Guam? You better come and kill me in vain as the If you sing that song again, your necks will be cut. Understand? You will return to your work. Uh, In the next two and a half years, we saw little of the foods of the island. Taro, coconuts, melons, pineapples, breadfruit, corn, bananas. Remember, Jose, when we used to eat fish from our lagoons and chicken and pork? They allowed us two pounds of rice every ten days. Some soya beans, salt, sugar. That was all. We grew hungry and weak. Many of us became ill from malnutrition. Many died. When? When are the Americans coming back? I don't know. If they do not come soon, all of us will be dead. They will come someday. We waited and worked and sang. And when we could not sing the words we thought of, we hummed. Stop that! Stop it! What is that? What? That drone. Hear it? That's planes. Bombers. Where are they? It's coming from over that way. There they are. Look at them. Bombers. They must be American. 
They are American planes. Look at them. Those are dive bombers. <laughs> were like stampeding cats. They could not stop us. We scattered out through the valleys and up into the hills. But within a few days, the Japanese military police, the Kempei Tai, were in the hills rounding us up. They hunted us down in twos and threes and brought us down into the valleys. Then they marched us in large groups back to our work. If you show the same stupidity again, it will cost your life. The American bombings are no more than nuisance raids. If they return, you will stay at your work. I warn you now that if you leave your work again for any reason whatever, your necks will be cut. Now, get back to work. Take the guy. Some of us got a glimpse of the damage at the gun. They have smashed some of the buildings around the Plaza de España. They have smashed nearly all the buildings around the plaza. What will happen to Organia next time? Do you not know? This was June 1944. And now, it was July. The American bombers came back again and again. And the American fleet moved in close and shelled the Japanese shore installations. 10,000 tons of American shells and bombs hit the island. The Japanese called us all together, lined us up in columns, and marched us into the hills. Where are they taking us? We must expect anything. Perhaps they're going to shoot us. They must be nervous, or they would not line us up so quickly, in a matter of minutes. And march us off like this. They know the Americans are coming soon. Stop that talking over there. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Or your necks will be cut. They marched us into a stockade camp at Sinan. And there they locked us up. We milled around with the guards standing over us. What will they do to us when the Americans land? By the fury of the distant sounds, we knew the Americans must be landing. He has locked up thousands of the other civilians, the Tullus Wolf and Manny Yon. That must mean that the real fight for the island is on. The Japanese guards are gone. All the Japanese guards are gone. What? Look, they're all gone. Wait. Maybe this is a trap. Maybe they are waiting for us to try to leave so they can shoot us. That night, we walked out of the camp. We made our way down through the valleys. And there on the beaches, but the Americans. keep us out of danger, they herded us all to get on refugee camps. When the fighting was over, they permitted us to leave a few at a time. I headed back for Otania. Otania was in the I stood near the cathedral where the priest and Pablo and I used to talk, and I looked out across the Plaza de España. The government house was wrecked, the barracks, the courthouse, stone hall. The American flag was flying where the Japanese flag had flown. And all around it was the destruction done by the American guns and explosives. The Agania I knew was gone. to make Guam the greatest advanced base in the Pacific. When we first heard this, we could not imagine how much our island would be changed. We shall need all possible help. We are therefore setting up a labor priority board to fill the needs of the various commands. 
All tomorrow's who wish jobs should contact the board in the gun. 5,000 Chamorros volunteered for work. All you people in this group will work at Apra Harbor. Follow me this way. All right, you men in this group will work on Northwest Airfield for the heavy bombers. Come this way along with me. Pablo and I went to work at Apra Harbor. Look at those dredges out there. Yes. It was always said that the U.S. would never deepen Opera Harbor because it would be regarded in the Pacific as an act of aggression. Look, they're not only dredging this and making it deeper. Look, look out there. They're widening it. Yes, yes. Oh, here comes the storm, huh? Oh, yes. Oh, uh, will the harbor here be big enough for the big American ships? Sure. There's nearly seven square miles of water out there. When we get those breakwaters in, the wharves, dry docks built, we'll have the best harbor in this part of the Pacific. The big bulldozer shaved down the terrain. The big trucks move mountains, hills, and coral sand. Caterpillar tractors roll from morning to night. I am going to work overtime tonight, Jose. Ah, to get the bigger pay, huh? Oh, not only that. To get my lunch free. <laughs> well, I will work all the time. Uh, come on, man, come on. The work, the work. <laughs> we worked along with the people. They were all strong men, red faced. And when our work was done, we stood in line with them to get our food. And we sat down and ate with them. I wonder how they're getting along with Northwest Airfield up there. Northwest Airfield? What is this? Are you kidding? That's the big B-29 field they're putting up in the northwest corner of the island. Oh. Some of our guys are working on it. It's going to be the longest runway in the world, 8,500 feet, over a mile and a half long. Then they're really going to bring those big planes here. Oh, listen. That's only one of the B-29 fields. They're putting in another one up in the neighborhood of Patty Point. And they're building three other new fields. Listen, we're going to make a base out of this island. We could hardly realize how our island was changing. Very soon, we saw more and more planes in the air over us. We got so we could identify them, the different kinds of bombers and transport planes, and one kind of fighting plane from another. Can I tell you something? There's more traffic out of the new field at Agania than out of LaGuardia Field in New York. It's a fact. Transport planes carrying mail in, millions of tons of it, and carrying wounded out every day between here and Hawaii, Manila, Iwo Jima, and a dozen other places. Brother, as a base, this is going to be it. When our work at Opera Harbor was done, we stood by and watched the great ships come in. Well, that'll give you some idea of what kind of a port this is going to be, Jose. I have never seen so many ships. You see, what we've got here now is not only a harbor deep enough to accommodate big ships. We've also got docks, fuel supply, repair facilities. Everything they've got at Pearl Harbor. As a matter of fact, from now on, Guam here is going to be a Pearl Harbor. In the next few months, we saw things on Guam that we never dreamed Guam would ever have. 360 miles of new highway on our island of only 225 square miles. We now have four fleet hospitals and three army hospitals with accommodations for nearly 10,000 patients. Medical supplies are coming in by air every day, even whole blood, and patients are being flown out. The Americans were here. Guam was an American island. But we... The people of Guam were not American. Look at those big trucks, how they go. Yes, such plenty. They're always full of food, ammunition or something. America must be wonderful. Then Admiral Nimitz came. Guam became his headquarters. We knew when he came that big things were going to happen. Everyone talked of what he said. Here is our fleet base, now and after the war, whether we like it or not. We are responsible for the peace in the Pacific. 
And we must take that responsibility. Agania was still in ruins. Our homes, many of them with tile roofs and running water and electric lights, were gone. Temporary housing was put up for us. Well, there you are, Jose. That ought to do until you can get a house that you can live in permanent. Yes, it is all right. That roof ought to keep the rain off you like nothing. Coconut thatch will keep the rain off, yes. Yeah, that's what I say for the time being. Of course, that floor's kind of rough. Done a job coconut logs, but it's strong. Yes. What gets me is the way you guys can weave those coconut prongs in and out like that to make the walls. Oh, it is very simple, really. Well, one of these days, the war's going to be over. And then you can go back and get yourself a new house in Agania. When do you think the war will be over? We're getting ready to give them the works now. Pablo and I went to work in a new civilian hospital at Agania. The doctors and nurses and all the other attendants were Navy people. I hope they can do something for the sick children, Jose. The Sibis have made cradles for them, and the children are getting good food now. They're so sick. They went hungry so long. The little ones suffered. Many of them died before the big drive started. Look at them B-29s up there. What did I tell you guys? Every day we saw the great bombers overhead. We saw more and more of them. And ships came into the harbors in such numbers we could not keep track of them. The supplies must have come in by the millions of tons. We worked every day, and every day the tempo grew faster. Men and supplies, ships and planes and equipment of all kinds coming and going faster, faster every hour of the day. And the war came. The war is over. Japan's knocked out. Get me! be permitted to go back to Agania. It may be some little time yet. Our houses of coconut fronds are falling down. The rain leaks through and the logs are worm-eaten. You must be patient. I have found the place where my house was. Yes. Uh, well, uh, a city planning commission has been set up to work out plans for the reconstruction of Agania. Must I go to them? Uh, they will take care of you in time. Then I can build another house? Well, um, yes. Uh, but, of course, you will have to build it out of salvage. That is all there is available for construction. In the passing months, we saw our island change from a wartime base to a peacetime base. We saw the gradual slowing down. Fewer ships coming in. Fewer planes in the air. The men... Uh, well, so long, Pablo. Jose. Goodbye to you, Charlie. Goodbye, Charlie. We fix this place of yours up now and see that you keep it up, huh? Yes. The high press says Guam here is going to be an important place from now on. Yes. Will all the big airfields be kept up and the hospitals and well, all that's the... what they're talking about. Of course, I don't know how much of it's going to be kept on a wartime footing. But anyway, it's fixed up now in the Navy support. So you guys behave yourself, huh? Yes. Are you going back to Brooklyn? Yes, sir. Boy, that's the place for me. That's where I'm a solid citizen. Yes. Charlie. Do you think the United States will ever make us citizens? You guys want to be citizens? Our island has been under the United States for nearly 48 years. They teach us like, well, like the people of a conquered country. Why, yes, we want to be citizens. <laughs> well, why not? Well, I'll see you, fellas. So long, both of you. Most of the Americans who were here during the war are now gone. Others have come. We can see that Guam is to be a big base. That it will not go back to what it was before the war. We hear rumors. Listen, Guam here is going to be one of the biggest bases in the whole world. The United States is here for keeps. What they're going to do with some of the other Pacific Islands, nobody knows. But they know what they're going to do with this one. We know what they are going to do with our island, Jose. But what are they going to do about us? I do not know, Pablo. I wonder when the American Congress will do something about Mr. Farrington's bill. Yes, Mr. Farrington's bill. Mr. Farrington, the delegate from Hawaii, is trying to get American citizenship for the people of Guam. And Mr. Grant, the congressman from Indiana, has introduced a bill into the American Congress also to provide for Guam the same kind of self-government as Hawaii and Alaska and Puerto Rico have. We are waiting to see what will happen. For we remember what happened to the last bill introduced several years before the war. 
A group of Guamanians went to Washington to try to get the bill through the Congress. We have failed. Failed? Uh, and you went there at your own expense. We told them that we had no support whatever from the government of the island. But did they understand that you had come there to try to help to get the bill through? Yes, yes, they understood. Then, then they do not want us to be citizens. Mr. Farrington's bill was introduced into the house more than a year ago. Should they not have taken some kind of action by this time, Jose? Some kind of action, yes. Why do they wait? We have proved our loyalty to Uncle Sam. Yes, we have proved our loyalty. For heroism and action, I award you this medal. Zamora fought the Italians in Sicily and Italy. For distinguished service above and beyond the call of duty, I award you this honor. Zamora fought the Nazis in France and Germany. For outstanding bravery against overwhelming enemy odds in the fighting in the Pacific, I award you this cross. Zamora fought the Japanese on Guam and on many other islands on the road to Tokyo. Our people were starved and tortured, and yet we resisted, even after the American government had been driven from Guam. And when the Americans came back, we worked with them and did all we were able. And still, we have no voice in our government. Well, some Gomanians are in the government. The departments of education and labor and commerce and industry have Gomanians on their staff. Yes, this is right. And the civil courts have Gomanian judges. This, too, is right. But the criminal courts have Navy and Marine officers for judges. And the laws are the laws of the naval military government. The naval governors made the laws and, well, they could change them without notice to us. It must be understood that because of the war, Guam is still under a naval military government. Yes, but this is little different from the naval government we had before the war. It will take time. Many things have happened since we used to sit in the shade of the cathedral overlooking the Plaza de España and talk about this thing that is closest to us. I stand here now looking over the ruins of our capital city of Agania, destroyed in the war between the United States and Japan. One day in due course, Agania will again be rebuilt. I wonder if at that time... Tomorrow's like Pablo and the priest and me. We'll still be sitting in the shade of the coconut palm, talking this thing over and over, and wondering when, somehow, it will change. And we will have the civil liberties guaranteed under the Bill of Rights of the Constitution, and we'll be citizens of the United States of America. <laughs> listening to The Pacific Story, presented by the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations to clarify events in the Pacific and to make understandable the cross currents of life in the Pacific Basin. Pacific Story is written and produced by Arnold Marquis. The music was scored and conducted by Henry Russell. The principal voice was that of Lou Krugman. Programs in this series of particular interest to servicemen and women are broadcast overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This program came to you from Hollywood. It is heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.